What's up everybody, this is Greg and we are breaking sound at the Lion's Den Mastering. Uh, today we are going to go over DynaQ Volume 2. This is Master Lab Audio's uh, plug-in. It's a dynamic processing unit, like a dynamic EQ. Um, very, very interesting. I was using this plug-in a little bit. Um, while I was mastering and um, I didn't really dive into it too crazy so um, but I, I like the sound that I was getting out of it I was using it kind of as a saturation unit well what I decided to do is I wanted to make a video on this I went into their website and then I took a look at their manual it's pretty clear um, and really will help you understand the whole concept of this because you can get some really great and interesting sounds uh, with this plugin. So um, what I'm going to do is we're going to jump over here into Reaper and check it out and just do a quick overview. Um, what we have here is we have the above section and the below section. Essentially what this does is it allows you to kind of um, manipulate or, or um, EQ dynamically uh, the kind of top parts of the sound or the transients or, or the very top signal and then you have the kind of below signal um, which you can also use so like if you want to say add saturation to the quieter stuff but let the peaks of the track or of a drum loop stay untouched well then that's what this will be good for um, so what we have here is we have um, the above and below section where we can solo them. We have an attack and release time. Um, this is going to help kind of like, uh, you'll, you'll get a good understanding of how the sound's working. Um, and the best thing to do is to solo the above and the below. Um, the other part I like about this is you do have a sidechain when you enable this. It's I believe what it does is it will react more to a sidechain. When it's not enabled, it becomes a filter. Um, so if we want to just touch the the above is what I've been doing. I've been kind of messing with the above and, and getting little bits of saturation on some of the transients. Just gives a very analog style saturation, which I'm really impressed with. Um, but we can filter out the sub since we don't need to mess with the sub we don't we're not trying to saturate that part um we have a ratio control we have a balance between the below and the above like a kind of like a mix knob for each one or, or not for each one but you know if it's if it's in the center it's neutral now if you start to go to below well you're going to get more of the below signal and if you go to the right go above you're going to get more of the above signal um we've got the output and the mix knob um, so then we have the EQ section, which we'll jump over to first, which is, we have some shelving options, um, the frequency control, the gain, the width, which is like the cur of the Q. Um, and we have, so active or not active like a, a bypass basically um, a solo and this is really nice because you can really pinpoint you know if I have a, a snare that's barely sitting in a mix and I want to really bring it out I can pinpoint that snare um, solo using the EQ and, and and turn the width down to get a sharper cue here um, you can get some things to pop out and we'll go over that as I run some material through it um, let me unsolo these. Um, so we have a selection where we can do a shelf, a, a low shelf, a bell, or a high shelf. Um, now we have this link feature, which is nice too, because it will link, whoops, let's turn both these on, and link three, you know, oops, three right here. You see, it, it'll link to the above and below section. So, uh, that's that's really helpful save some time um, we also have the inverse which is very helpful because basically 
if I'm doing something like this, and instead of having to come over here, we can just inverse these and it will do it for us. So that's a really helpful feature. You know, if you're trying to bring just the transient out of, you know, a drum, um, but not the bottom of it out, well, then this is real helpful. You know, you can boost it up on the above and it'll take it kind of out of the low. And you'll really be able to just pick up the transient of a sound. Uh, my favorite section to this is the saturation of, and you get it on both the above and the below. It's the saturation, the color, um, the mix, and the width and the pan. Um, if you just drive a little bit of the saturation tastefully, you can get a nice little bite. And the type of saturation that it's doing um, for me is a type of color and, and saturation that I've always kind of like looked for. It's got a little bit of this like clean fuzz to it, but it's very desirable. So um, really interesting thing. Okay. So I've got a track here from Esker. It's a German bass track that I'm master, uh, mastering right now. So what we'll do is we'll take a listen to the plugin. Um, this specific track, maybe I want to get a little more energy out of the hats and maybe a little bite to that that snare that's in there um, give it a little bit more of an analog feel with with plugins so um, I'm gonna tinker around here and we'll have a listen <laughs> As you can see, you can really get some interesting, you know, uh, vibe with this, it's, even in mastering. Um, you know, it's designed to do mastering or to just even do a single source or signal. Um, you could get some pretty interesting stuff on drum loops, um, even on your mid bass or, or any type of uh, synth going through this thing. It's a pretty special plugin and it just takes a little bit of tinkering around and understanding of it and understanding of, of dynamic EQing in general. Um, but if you read through um, the manual, it'll really, it's, it's a very well-written manual and it'll kind of just explain it very simply um, how it works. So um, check out Dyna EQ. You can get it on Master Lab Audio. Um, it's a great plug-in. I'm using it, um, and I'm definitely going to use it a lot more now that uh, I've gotten a lot, a little more familiar with it. All right, uh, this is Greg. We're breaking sound at the Lions Den Mastering. Peace out. <laughs>